Hi all. In this video we will be going over fixed second law and fixed first law, more conceptually than the actual derivations that were done in class. So fixed second law gives a way to relate, so it's all about the concentration of particles and it relates how it changes in time to how it changes in space. In this class, we're t we will be looking at steady state uh, situations, so the concentration won't change in time. So this side of the equation will be equal to zero. So we're going to end up with zero equals the diffusion coefficient times the second derivative of the concentration with respect to position. So what this ends up telling us, so this is just a differential equation that gives a limit as to how we can mathematically describe something. So in 1D, this is linear. So it's going to be that the concentration is a function of x. This is going to be a of x plus b. In the spherically symmetric case, it's going to go inversely as the radius. So that's a plus b. And this, all this does is limit what uh, mathematical uh, description we can give for how the concentration changes as a, as a function of distance. So whatever way we describe it, it has to set up, satisfy this differential equation. Now, where does fixed first law come in? So fixed first law says that the flux, so the number of particles per unit area, per unit time, is equal to negative of the diffusion coefficient times the first derivative of the concentration. So this is fixed first law. And really what we do is we start with fixed second law that dictates what our solution to how the concentration will be, and then we end up applying the boundary conditions, finding it for the specific case, and then we use fixed first law to figure out the flux, and with the flux we can also figure out the current. So this is, uh, that should be an x, sorry. So the flux times the area will give you the current, so this could also be written like this. So after we find what our concentration is as a function of position. We take its derivative, we multiply it by the diffusion coefficient and a negative sign to get the flux, and we can multiply by the area to get the current, and this is going to tell us how, what way particles are flowing and how much of them. So we can understand better how uh, different parameters such as the permeability of membranes affects the flow because that's in the end what we care about. All right, thank you very much.